you can start up. Okay. So hi everyone. Um, I don't know if uh, I think I see a few people returning from yesterday's uh, session or no? Uh, am I mistaken? Maybe it was the previous session. That I was. But uh, hi everyone. I'm Elvo Dopulu. I work for uh, Pina Research Center in Greece, based in Greece. Uh, and I'm involved in Open Air. And in Open Air, we have created a, a tool that I would like to show you today uh, about uh, DMPs and actually creating machine actionable DMPs. Uh, let me share my screen. First, show you the presentation. Oops. Just first close all the irrelevant. Back again. Perfect. So a few things uh, about uh, Argos is that it is an open source tool. Uh, it was uh, co-developed with the UDA, the European Data Services uh, Infrastructure, uh, and now it's maintained by uh, Opener. Um, there, this is where it's hosted. You can find it under the Opener catalog or under argos.opener.eu, and it's also uh, an EOSC resource, so it is um, available and findable through the EOSC portal and the EOSC marketplace. Um, uh, again, it's, it's an open source tool and it's configurable and extensible. That means you can go to GitLab, the, this link, and you can uh, get the code and deploy it in your own uh, institution. Um, you know, use the different components and uh, even make modifications, create new features, add new features if you want, uh, and uh, use it in the best way possible for your needs. Um, connected with your different services and so on uh, for, to, to, to meet the tailored needs that you have. Uh, this tool is about planning, uh, the, pl planning the RDM activities according to open access and fair data policies. Uh, it has more than 2,000 users by now, and you can use it, as I mentioned, well, it's free to use it, and it's also uh, free to install it if you do it uh, by, to deploy it uh, on yourselves, or if, um, it might have some extra cost if uh, we help you with the deployment um, and the the linking of the different services. Marcos is based on the templating system that, employ, that, that is, consists of dynamic and static parts. Uh, it has some access points. Sorry, if you could mute, uh, I don't see. If you could mute uh, during the presentation, then we can all uh, have, have discussions and questions uh, with each other. Um, as I was saying, there is a dynamic part which uh, uh, lies on the different templates that uh, the DMP has. Uh, and that's because uh, a template, not all the templates are, are different, coming from funders and institutions or just created for uh, the purpose of, uh, of tutorial or for educational purposes in the, uh, in the libraries, for example. Not all, not all templates are uh, the same. Not all, not all templates have the same structure, the same questions. Uh, they may uh, want researchers to provide the same answer, but the question might be phrased differently or um, being um, uh, separated in, in two or three uh, sub, uh, sub questions uh, so that it's easier for the researcher to uh, answer. Uh, so th there are different, you know, different um, things that everyone is doing to create the DMP template. Um, that means that it's difficult also to understand where the RDA compatibility is, uh, and uh, that we have a, that that's why we have employed the we have integrated the RDA fields to be uh, on top of the questions that are created uh, on the DMP, and we'll we'll see in a minute how this looks like. Um, 
Argos uh, is not just a tool to write DMPs, but it's uh, also um, it, can, it, it is utilized as a service to publish also DMPs by integrating with uh, the different uh, different providers such as the Nodo, which is the default. Uh, for now, it uh, provides uh, outputs that are machine actionable and machine readable. Also, it uh, can uh, contribute to implementing data domain protocols. To that means to highlighting uh, the different uh, the differences. Um, in applying the open and fair principles at the level of the, each data set, each individual data set described in the DMPs, uh, because we know that there are different uh, things that we want to ask or we need to ask for new data sets, for reduced data sets, for sensitive data sets, for discipline specific data sets. Uh, so addressing them uh, individually and not all together in the single DMP. It can be contextualized and exploitable. Uh, and exploited by uh, the research graph, uh, which is connected, uh, and it uh, has standards that it uh, applies, such as the RDA uh, standard for DMPs uh, and uh, other um, collaborations and other uh, standard processes that it uh, follows uh, through collaborations with uh, other organizations. And now I would like to move on to the demo. So I will show you two, um, two interfaces, the two editors, the two main editors. So the one that is meant to be used by researchers and the other one that is meant to be used by admins uh, who have to create the template from scratch or, or at, anyway, who, who provide the template to the researcher to complete. So this is where you will go. So, sorry, I will use some test instances. Don't mind this, this address. You can go to Argos uh, as usual. You, you will find the product here. So this is what we should use. But for the purposes of this, um, of this session, I will, use the, um, I will use the test instances. So you, you can see uh, when you enter, uh, let's go through the home page, the, the, the landing page how it connects with Opener and EOS, the different features that, that Argos has, um, the user experience, what are the, what are the steps to write a DMP, who benefits, and how to, where to find the, the code uh, and co-brand your own um, deployed uh, instance. Some useful resources, the contact uh, and about pages. You can start your DMP, by, you can enter the tool by starting your DMP, clicking this button. So now I can start with um, writing the DMP. A basic tool that I will leave out of this demo for the moment, and I'm now on my home page. Now I can see on my dashboard. So if you could please mute, maybe I can find it and mute you. Okay. Okay, I found it. Sorry. Um, sorry, but it was there, there was this background. Uh, okay, so this is the dashboard. You can see uh, the personal usage. This is the test instance, instance as I mentioned, so that you can know. <laughs> there are no uh, statistics to show, but if you go here and I connect, then you will see uh, then you will see so it's a bit slow that you can sign in with different accounts academic uh, like orchid or um, an opener and others such as google for example which is more convenient for me at the moment so i'll use that and here you can see that uh, I have created some DMPs and there are uh, displayed uh, as, uh, as analytics here, right? Uh, I can view my latest activity on Argos, uh, which was the DMP, which was the data set that I edited. And we are using color coding for that. So DMPs that, that include all the different data sets here. Uh, so the, the full complete DMP record is uh, under, uh, you know, uh, identified as uh, in uh, green, in green color, and data sets are identified uh, with this uh, yellowish uh, color. So when we're talking about data set, information only about the data set is here. 
Okay. Uh, here you can see uh, your DMP's collection, what you have created or, or now edited or now uh, creating, the associated data sets that are linked to your DMP's, uh, and uh, next you will find the same but a uh, public version. So the public collection of DMP's and associated data set descriptions that we provide through Argos. Um, Please don't mind this extra uh, thing, these extra features, because these are for the admin, and I will show you uh, later how uh, they are meant to be used. Uh, but if you log into Argos, you will not have access to that because these are for the admin. So um, assuming that we are a researcher, we go to Argos, start the DMP from here. We can import the file uh, from uh, import the import function, which um, is uh, allows for RDA um, compatible, sorry, for RDA compatible um, files to be uploaded. And this is more advanced. So I will skip for this uh, session, for, for the session, and I will start the DMP by just going to the editor and uh, writing my DMP. Here, um, as you see, uh, I know that I, I will work on the whole record of the DMP. So the DMP, I will provide the basic information of it, what is uh, the title of the DMP. Sorry, uh, let me just switch because I, I want to, to show you. Okay, let me go here. So you can start your first DMP, start the wizard as I did before. DMP for course. First, I provide a name to my DMP. I provide a description why this DMP is created. Provide language. It will be written in English, so or so English. So let me select English. The visibility uh, is by default um, selected as restricted, uh, but if you want to make it available at a later stage, at the end maybe, you can click public and it will be uh, immediately here under the public uh, collection. But now it's restricted. You can um, add the names of the researchers that are working for this, uh, for, that, are, that are involved in the research data management activities. So these are, for example, here you can see we have integrated ORCID, so you can search the whole ORCID directory um, to find my name or by uh, the, um, or by the ORCID ID, and you can add more if you want. If you don't find it, because not all of the researchers have ORCID, you can uh, enter the researcher ID, for example, here manually, uh, uh, first name, uh, so first name, surname, etc. Add the organization that are working uh, in this project for the research data management activities, uh, like FINA, for example. And here you see we use the open orgs. I don't know how many of you were in the session, but we use the open orgs, uh, which is the fullest. Uh, in, in all of our APIs, we besides the, the ORCID, uh, in all of the, the other APIs, we uh, take them from open air, uh, which, uh, which harvests more than 12,000 uh, sources and uh, gets them, validate the information, they duplicate them, and return back uh, more enhanced, let's say, incomplete lists uh, of, of information provided in, in, the, in, their AP, in the open APIs. So we use them. Uh, and if you, you can add more, if you don't, uh, if, you, if, if it is not included here, you can manually add it. Here is the contact of uh, the contact person for this DMP. So I'm the creator, hence I am by default the contact, but you can switch if you invite other people to join you inviting the DMP and you can uh, delegate amongst you who will be, uh, you know, the responsibilities. So who will be the manager of the DMP 
and so on. Funding organizations, uh, here we see the European Commission, for example, and next grants that the European Commission has. Uh, for example, let me take the opener advance as an example. So we see that the uh, these two fields are sorted by uh, the grants uh, field is sorted by the um, name of the of the funder. License, I'm asked to provide a license to the DMP so that others know how to use or reuse it afterwards or if they can. And uh, do that, Creative Commons. And here I'm asked to provide uh, the templates for the data sets. So, the, so, so um, the profiling, as I mentioned, the, uh, the, the templates within the DMP template uh, that the data sets uh, can be uh, described with. And for example, if I have some new data, and the questions have to do with this new data, I click this. If the questions have to do with other research outputs, I click this template and now, um, and reuse. Let's say that we're going to use all of them for this demonstration, right? And as I click save and add data set, um, it says that I can go now to the editor. Uh, to the data set editor. This is why this color changed. Now we are in the yellowish screen, which means I'm adding information for the data set. And what is data set? Sorry? Uh, Hello? Um, sorry. Steffi, I think it's you uh, that is unmuted. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so, the, so here I, I provide information only about the data set. So data set, the name of the data set, data set new or data. Let's give the name of the data set, uh, description of the data set, uh, some, add some tags for the data set and so on. Uh, and now uh, I'm asked to select which template I want this data set to be uh, described with. Uh, and here you see I had the new data, the other outputs, the reuse data. I'm reusing this data, so I will click this and go to next. Now I can see, I can, uh, I can see the whole structure of this template and I can uh, move around to go to particular um, questions within the template, right? Navigate around, provide my answers uh, to those questions. And the questions have uh, different inputs, as you see. We tried to, we, we want to minimize the text um, and provide more guidance towards the, um, uh, the specific points that need to be addressed in the different sections uh, in terms of content. So we, um, we are using not, not just free text, but we are also trying to provide some guidance uh, through instructions or through the different inputs that we ask researchers to, um, to, to uh, complete in different inputs to complete. And as you can see here, for example, uh, there is um, also the ORCID, A the ORCID API that we're using. Um, under the question, identify the people or roles that will be responsible for the management of the project data, right? And if we cannot find it, again, we, uh, we add the name and the role, we specify the role. We add more people, we can add more people to this. Um, and this is how it looks. So it, it has, it, it can have some radio, radio uh, buttons uh, as input. It, it can have predefined lists that you use. It's essentially like a form, but in a dynamic way, because here you see this, these are some controlled vocabularies that we take uh, the information from the different um, uh, sources. 
and we make sure that they are um, the answers are provided in a standard way when we use at least the APIs for that. Okay, so so as a form, yes, no um, lists, as I mentioned, APIs and free text. How uh, I can save it if I'm done, and I can find it under my DMPs. This is how it looks like. I can continue editing it, clone it, and uh, create a, another version. Um, yeah, edit it. See the basic the data here. Add new data sets to this DMP, and so on. So now I want, I want to move on to showing you how uh, the admin can create this uh, this template, right? So now uh, I'm in the admins uh, features panel here. Um, I won't touch the DMP templates because it's something that we had developed in the past and we are now revisiting um, and it's not finished, but I will touch the data set templates, the profiling, let's say that we, um, we use for the DMPs. Uh, you can see also the users, the different users of this particular uh, instance. You can download them and you know create analytics um, with them, have the knowledge of who is uh, using the tool. You can um, in the language editor you can look you, you can use it the, the language editor to provide the localizations of your Argos instance in your language, and you can. Um, play around with the user guide to um, provide more instructions to researchers of how to use it um, or add any other information that you want, images and all that, and all that um, from here. So going to the data set template, that is what we are using, um, how, where, where these new data templates and other subjects templates and reuse data templates are uh, created. I can import one. Uh, and let's delete this because I, I want to import it, for example, again. So I can import that. If I have worked uh, on, an, uh, on an HTML to create the structure, for example, I can do that. I'm importing this. It is here under draft. Uh, what is what you find under finalized are those um, templates that also the researchers, as we were seeing before, can see and select from the collection. But what is in draft mode, they cannot see it yet. There are some features, there, there are some uh, actions that they can do, like create a new version of this template, clone it, uh, see the, all the different versions, download the XML, or delete uh, this template. And uh, since I added that, let's see how I can finalize it to be added so that it's added and visible to the researchers. Uh, I always create new versions because I don't want to lose uh, anything from the previous. So it's the default in the administrator's interface. Uh, I see here the basic information about the template, like its name, the name of the template, the description of the template, the language of the template, and who uh, is the um, manager of the template. So who is the admin, who is the owner of this template. Uh, second step is where I can see the whole content of the template, the structure, the different chapters, sections, subsections, and the different questions that it has, uh, right? And third uh, and last is where I can preview it. I can preview what I have created uh, as the researcher will view it to uh, complete it. So I can do this. I can see how the researcher will interact with it, see if everything works. If I need to change something, I go back to the second one and change it. And uh, once I'm uh, ready, once I'm happy with the result, I finalize it. And once I finalize it, then it's also visible to the researcher. And if I go back now, I don't have time, but if I go back, 
uh, then I can see it in the collection. Uh, and if I want to create a data set template from scratch, you got a bit of um, the, uh, a snapshot of how this looks like. Three easy steps. First step is create, um, just provide the basic um, information about this template. For example, let's say that we are creating the uh, Horizon Europe one. Um, Horizon Europe description would be um, a description. description for the template so that they understand what this template is about. Uh, I select the template language. And I can add more users to help me with writing this. Okay, I haven't logged in with that. This one. Ah, no, that's wrong. Okay, no, it's fine. I, was, I wasn't using the, the whole domain, okay. Uh, and then, Moving on to the structure, this is uh, what I see for the first time. Nothing there, nothing, not even the outline. I can uh, start creating the first chapter by clicking here or here. I'll use this for now. Chapter one. Create the first question, the first section. Provide the description. I can add my questions from here or from here. So add my question. Question about uh, organizations, for example, or about data sets. Provide a description. And here I can select the type of the question, the type of the input that uh, I want the researcher to answer, um, to, to provide when answering this question. So we have text uh, and free text, um, so open-ended. Uh, we have Boolean, yes or no. We have radio box, as you saw before, uh, with, with the radio buttons. We have select, which is for the multiple choice or single choice um, um, inputs. Uh, a checkbox that can be used to mark specific um, answers, uh, a date picker, uh, a currency. I think I saw the other currency. So these are fixed. Uh, they open a calendar and they open a controlled vocabulary and a list of APIs, registry services, uh, like services as the EOSC API that we're using. Um, and the data sets and so on. And people can also configure their own, um, their own API here by adding uh, the documentation uh, of this API, uh, you know, providing more attributes, how, how, how it can be uh, inferred and so on. This is for advanced users and we can also help with that, of course. Uh, but let's assume that I just want to use uh, the, Okay, I, I, I switched it. Let's say that I want to use the question about the services and I want to use uh, the services API so that it gets me information from the EOS to select uh, from their list of services. Here I'm also asked to, con here I can control the compatibility with the RDA. And this is very important because um, the way that we create those questions and the way, the, the way that we create those questions differ uh, in different templates uh, because not all of us uh, follow the same thinking or the same methodology, apply the same methodology on while, while they create, uh, you know, the, uh, their outputs and so on. So this is very important uh, that we make sure that each uh, question is linked to, is mapped to an entity or a property in the uh, RDA standard. Um, you can select if you want people to uh, provide more than one um, answers. 
So not so be able to select more than one options from the drop down list. And this is a preview. You can preview. It. You can add more inputs if you don't want. Uh, if, if you want, for example, people to not only select um, uh, from the list, but also provide an answer, you can uh, like, you know, type their answer and provide more context uh, of why they, they are using this service uh, in this particular example, then uh, I can add the free text, uh, which um, I can say, please specify, for example, right? Please specify. So if you select something, please make sure that you specify it. And I can control um, if this should be required, for example, if I want this field, this particular input to be always um, complete and do the same to, to the rest. I can make conditional questions, but we don't have time for that, but you can see here that I can make conditional questions if something is, if the answer, uh, let me show you quickly. So if I change this to Boolean, and I can have this conditional, let me do this again. So if answer is yes, I can have dependencies show me which question or which input. So here we don't have a lot, but you could see the whole list of questions and inputs to make it conditional too. I'll make it to be specified. So if you click yes, please let us know which and specify your answer, right? And this is the preview. Uh, I don't, I, I won't go through this, uh, this other, um, because I know that I'm five minutes late, and once I'm once I'm happy, I can save it as we saw before. Only save means that I'm saving it in draft mode. If I want to finalize it, we saw the workflow to finalize it. We go, uh, we make sure that we don't only save it, but we go to the last uh, step and we finalize it. Okay, I don't want to finalize. I will discard this. Uh, and now it's visible to to the researchers. So I don't know why it takes that long. Okay, I don't want to, to show you to, to more things because I might confuse you if I haven't done already successfully. Um, please, any questions? I'm happy, I'm so happy to answer them since I'm very passionate about this, <laughs> about DMPs and about uh, this too. Uh, Elena says, ah, sorry, Gabriella says, could you show us then also depositing to the node of please? Yes, though it's not, uh, it's disabled for the tests because uh, it's disabled, but it's very easy. Let, let me show you. Mm. Hope you can still see my screen. So if I have, um, if I have this, and I finalize my DMP, right? I have to finalize it before depositing it. And to finalize it means that I have to, um, to finalize it means that I have to provide answers to all the mandatory fields. So this will be very time consuming now to do so. Let me move to, to another instance and find, and find one DMP that is finalized to show you how this looks like. Okay, so um, let's say that I want to finalize this. I'm picking the wrong uh, DMPs now. This is from this. Did 
let me find the DMP that is complete. This will take some time. Oh yes, that's complete. Okay, so if I keep, so if all my questions, the mandatory questions are filled, uh, then I can finalize it. I couldn't because I, either I didn't have, uh, as you saw before, either I didn't have any data set described or uh, they, the, some fields that were mandatory were not completed, they, they were empty. So now that I have these data sets that are uh, provided with this, this uh, mandatory um, uh, answers, uh, I can finalize it, and when I finalize it, I can see extra things to do, extra actions to do, like with deposit, and I can click deposit, and then this is how it looks like. Uh, it asks me uh, if I want to use my own um, my own account on Zenodo, so they will be uploaded on my behalf or on behalf of uh, uh, the um, Argos uh, account. Um, and let's say that I would like to do this. So as I said here, this is disabled. Uh, I, this is disabled because it's, 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 it takes um, um, it takes uh, more effort to, to do. But if you go to Argos uh, and if you want to deposit it, there it works and you can find all the deposited. Let me show you. Let me open a new. Okay, let me use this if I go to the node. Argos outputs under the Argos community, I can find my deposit DMPs, right? Here. Um, and this is how it looks like. Okay. Um, then Elena says, thanks for the demo, Ellie. Can the DMPs drafted in Argos be a deliverable for a new project? Yes. Do we need to prepare a document additional document to the project management portal? So uh, the, the, I'll show you how. So if you use Argos and you deposit it, then it's here. You can find it here. And you can also find it under Opener. Let's choose, let me choose, let me go back to the model. Let's try and find this DMP, for example, that we uh, created for the, in the context of the Intelcom, uh, this project is named Intelcom. I can go to Open Air to explore to the portal. I can search it. Here it is, right? I can link this publication, this DMP, to my project, right? Now I have to log into Opener to do that. And then it's immediately under my project's uh, outputs, and it can be uh, quickly uh, downloaded the, the whole with the whole list of publications and recent data that I have produced in the context of this uh, of this project and I can send it to the European Commission. Yes, yes you can do that. That's the short answer. Ellie, can you show us an example of what a human readable DMP looks like after? Yes, of course. Yes, of course, I can show that. Uh, I can show you this. So as you can see here, we have uh, the document, the, the editable form, uh, and this is the machine uh, actionable. So I'm downloading it, and you can see this is uh, how it looks like. You can identify some things that, uh, if you were at if you were at the previous session for the DMPs, uh, Thomas uh, Thomas Miksha for uh, from the RDA showed who was actually one of the uh, one of the developers of this of this standard, uh, contributors of the, the development of the standard. He showed um, this different um, this different fields within the standard, and this is what they use, and this is how it looks like in a complete uh, DMP. Right? And then let's go 
back to chat. The demo version is only to researchers answer, right? We can't create implicit demo version as an organization of funder. How can we do in this case? Uh, the second part was for the admins, how, they how you can create the templates. The first part, which I hopefully you didn't miss if you came uh, later to the session. The first part was for the researchers. So what the researchers see is that and they can play around. Um, like here, they can edit it. They can add more information, add new data sets, describe new data sets. Right? And they just fill in the information here or uh, as an administrator, uh, you won't be able, now if you go to Argos, you're not an administrator, so you won't be able to see all these features, but as an administrator, you go here, um, yes it is, and you can um, enrich your collection, create new data set templates, uh, and make them available for the, the researchers, like, let me show you an already example, like this. Here is where you work as an admin for the content. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions? You can unmute. Please feel free to. And I hope you can still see me because I, <laughs> I, I see that it's quite late here. So the. the The light has gone. Oh, thank you, everyone. Please feel free, if you use it, please feel free to send us your feedback. We would really appreciate it. Uh, Steffi, who would be the admin institution, the RDM supporting, if available, the, the funding supporting, the researcher project head? That is up to you. That is up to the strategy that you will, uh, and, you know, you will design and follow. Um, it's it's really up to you. So if you if you have competent people uh, and effort uh, under the RDA support team, then they will be, um, which probably they will be <laughs> those people more most of the times. But if there's not uh, an effort there, and if the strategy says otherwise, the policies says otherwise, then you can um, manage, uh, de delegate responsibilities and see see what to place them. That I think is. Is the code available on GitHub? No, it's on GitLab, and we're now migrating it to another open, um, to the Gitty. I don't know if you are familiar with Gitty, because Gitty is what Opener uses, and we want to have all of, all of the services product under there. But let me, let me share with you, ah, stop sharing, first of all. And let me share with you uh, the code then. Here, but please uh, know that by by that time next month it won't be there, uh, so it will be at the uh, on our GT. So I will have to. Um, ah, if you check the if you check our website argos.w.u, then the new link will be available from there. We have the code there also, so make sure that you also check them. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for standing until now. For, for you know, uh, yeah, for being here until now. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy to to have like to to devote like ten more minutes um, to that. I can stop the recording and uh, we can uh, do a live uh, session if you prefer. 
ah, do you think that's because, yes, we could do that. Yes, we could do, ah, I like this idea. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> okay. <laughs>